I'm in the Philippines. I'm from Portugal, Lisbon, and the Verbal Day Missionary Priest to present me a little bit. I also uh, study and teach the <laughs> um, Bible uh, in the Verbal Day Institute in Loeche, Madrid. So just to present it. So now I'm going to share the PowerPoint. I do. Okay. Another one. So we already listened to the readings. I will focus mainly the gospel, though it's very related with with the other readings, both. Usually the first reading and the gospel, you know, are more related. But also there's a, the spirit uh, made me find a very uh, great connection between the gospel and also the second reading. So I will start with the context of the gospel. It's the first verses. Um, it's Jesus comes from the other side of the lake and he has just arrived and uh, a, a large crowd gathered around him so they were waiting for him. They knew he was arriving that place and they were already waiting for him because he did a lot of healings, he was already famous uh, in this mission, the first part of the Mark's gospel. So, and he stayed close to the sea. This is important because when Jairus, how do you say this? Jairus, 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 Jim. When Jairus arrives, he's just, he's just about, just leaves, left the, the boat. So he had just arrived. So Jairus also, was waiting for him. So this expresses a lot of the need and he was expecting him to arrive to, to land, you know? So one of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. He was there and he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. So. We listened already to the gospel, so I'm not <laughs> repeating them because I didn't know exactly uh, you read it before. No? Uh, so I start underlining some words. This would be like the first part of prayer with the word, reading closely the, the word. No? And he fell at Jesus' feet. So this means that he is humble and he recognizes in Jesus the Lord. He's not said directly, but shelling at the feet. And he's just pleading earnestly. So every word, every word has a deep meaning that we'll see later, you know. Earnestly insists he is very needy of what he's asking Jesus. You know? And it's the cure of his daughter that is at the point of death. So she's about dying. And he shows his faith. If you come and lay your hands on her, she'll get well and live. So here we can see the faith that Jairus has in what Jesus can do to his daughter. So also, Jesus answers his plea immediately. He doesn't say, Jesus, wait, I'm busy, I just arrived. No. He immediately goes with him. It's, um, 
It also talks a lot about Jesus' compassion for him. And also, it's an important detail after to interpret and that he's surrounded by his followers and pressed upon by a large crowd. So this is very important because of the woman. And, and then on the way to China's house, there's this woman. Well, this is the text. I'll only explain a little bit, no? Hemorrhage uh, for 12 years. Jairus' daughter is 12 years old. To have hemorrhages, to lose blood, blood in the Bible and the biblical culture, it's where life is. Uh, the, the soul, because we need blood to live. And blood is, it's um, how life, physical life goes. And to lose blood, it's to become impure. So this woman, she was, according to the Jewish law, the Torah, she was impure. And she, because she was touched by death, by a reality of death. She suffered greatly, was severe, so she tried everything to be cured, and she only rewarded. She heard about Jesus, so a terrible situation, and she heard about Jesus. This is very important because faith comes from hearing, says Saint John. If we never Lots of people in this world never heard about Jesus. So she goes and looks for Jesus because she heard of him. He was already fam famous in that region of Galilee. So, but she was impure. She couldn't approach others because she had always this flow of blood coming out from her. So she would contaminate, she would make others become impure. So she approaches behind in the crowd and touch his cloth. Here the word is saying what she did. But now the word also tells more, tells what makes her what she feels, what she thinks when he, she's doing this. No? He thought I only touch his clothes because she couldn't dare to touch him, his flesh or his, only the clothes because she knows she's impure. She's, she couldn't approach a person. It's forbidden for her, for the Jewish law. And as, but she's sure that she'll be cured. It's very important of the faith. She's certain that if he's, if she touches his clothes, he will be cured. And as she does this, immediately she gets cured. She felt in her body that she was healed. And now the reading tells us about Jesus. And Jesus, after this, the disciples, Jesus feels, he experiences that there was a different touch. He's surrounded by a crowd. People are touching him also because he's, uh, they are, as it said before, no, that uh, they pressed upon him, he's pressed for, by the crowd, but he notices that someone approached him and touched him in a very different way. There's a crowd pressing him, there's one person, this woman, that touches him in a different way. 
you feel that a power gun went out from him. So he standing around among the crowd to look for one person, the one that touched him in a different way. Who has touched my clothes? Not him with the clothes. And the reaction of the disciples is the logical, the human, the natural uh, questioning. You are, the crowd is pressing upon you. And how can you ask who touched me? Everybody, <laughs> lots of people are pressing and touching your clothes all over. But he continues to look around to find out the person who had done this uh, in a special way. And she could, she understood the woman, what happened, and that Jesus was looking for her. So there's a big step. Now, I, I later I explain, this is the text, no? But I'll go deeper more on the meditation. But she approaches, though fearing and trembling, she fell down before Jesus, like Jairus in, in uh, the beginning of the gospel. Now she's before. It. She approached Jesus behind. She was ashamed. She knew it was forbidden for her to touch Jesus, to touch anyone, because she was impure. But now she got the courage to go before Jesus. And she fell before, down before him and told him the whole truth. So it's confessing that though being impure and forbidden by the Jewish law to approach anyone, she did this with Jesus because of her faith. And then I'll explain later, no, but it's very important the answer Jesus gave to her daughter. He calls her daughter. She's now not anyone. It's sometimes we read fast now. <laughs> Jesus calling her this woman, this impure woman with this blood sickness for 12 years, his daughter, because now. She has a new life. Your faith has saved you. What saved you was, well, I'll ask you later, <laughs> go in peace and be cured of your affliction. It's like the certificate. No? Now you can go, now you are cured. So, um, well, because this is the other miracle. I don't know if I, I can, Maybe you can go hmm, meditate a little more on the woman and then jump again to the Jairus daughter. No? Well, this uh, basically I said already so. I'm going to go to the other miracle, okay? Then at the end, I'll... So, while he was just speaking to the, the woman, people from the synagogue officials, oh, they arrived and said that your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? So there's no no matter to... Uh, don't go further. You, know? you can stop here. There's no need to go to the house anymore because uh, she died. You know? And Jesus does disregarding, this is the translation here, Jesus doesn't listen to what they're saying. And this is very important, you know, then to later for, to apply to us you know, in the prayer. Because there always are voices that are saying, this is finished, this is over. The... So Jesus disregards what they're saying, and he says to the synagogue of Israel, do not be afraid, just, just have faith. 
continued to believe. He had already faith. He went to ask Jesus to come to his house to heal, put his hands upon his daughter to heal her. But now they he knows that she died, at least what they, they said, but have more faith, you know, just have faith, don't be afraid. Like Jesus. And he didn't allow anyone to accompany him except Peter, James, and John. Um, because I also related this with um, the crowd that was around Jesus, because why they were so close to Jesus, but there was not the, there was no connection between Jesus and these people around, because they were not believers. They were like uh, watching what happens, what's going to happen. It was a show at the time. Jesus healing, uh, talking. <laughs> it was should be very attractive for the people. Jesus only chooses these three uh, disciples that start to believe and to go to the house of Jairus and experience. When they arrive at the house, they're weeping, wailing loudly, the people, because the, the girl was already dead for them. But Jesus, there's a contrast between what Jesus sees and feels is living and what the rest of the people are seeing. Jesus sees beyond, beyond death. He sees the power of the love of God to change the situation. So they are weeping loudly, wailing loudly. And Jesus, why, why is this conclusion and weeping? The child is not there, but asleep. And they ridicule him, ridicule him. And Jesus appears as ridiculous. Can't you see the evidence? She's not, um, <laughs> she's already there. No? But he put them all out. He only took the child's parents and the three that apostles that went with him no? to the room. And then he does the miracle. We already listened. Uh, this arise. It's the same verb of resurrection, no? This you know. so he does the miracle. Now we go for the meditation. I don't know how much time, no? But I already told you about the impurity of this woman. Um okay, so all of this I have so there's a difference between being with Jesus close to Jesus I think this we can apply a lot to our life how do I approach Jesus in my prayer when you go to mass when you receive communion is there a real encounter and a real touch? And is an external encounter or there's a real personal encounter that heals, that change, that I can receive, reach Jesus, God's healing power? And this is a complete healing, as I told you before, of the woman, not only the physical one of her illness, but also in her dignity. She was, she, she was uh, impure and she was out of the social relations. She, she was out of the society of the time. And now she can go before Jesus in front of him, tell all the truth, and listen to 
is Jesus calling her daughter. And one question I think it's important for us is who cured the woman? Of course, you, we all answer Jesus, Jesus' power. You know, she needed it. It comes out from Jesus, this power that heals. Jesus' power, Jesus' word. Yes, but at the end of this part of the gospel, Jesus says to her, your faith will say, like if Jesus is saying, it's not me, or it's him, but without her faith, she wouldn't be healed. So there's a process also in Jairus towards his daughter, no? and he continued to believe, though he was told that she already died. But your faith, they say, because she was moved by faith, she was certain that touching his cloak, she would be healed. There's a thing that I, I want to, as a guideline you know, for your prayer, uh, relating also with the second reading. Because this woman, and as Jairus also, they are living a situation of poverty. In the second reading, I don't know if it's here before me, but it was told that Jesus, uh, the Son of God, Jesus became poor to enrich us through his poverty. How can poverty become a riches? And I was reminding, I remember one situation I was just ordained priest a long time ago. <laughs> I was in the United States and there in the community there, there was a, a, a young couple. They had a, a child, so you know the, the story ends well. And they they told me the story. They she they didn't marry by the church. They were not matrimony for a time, a long time, because she was not a believer. She was not baptized, and he, he respected uh, the situation. And when she was pregnant and after the delivery, the baby has an illness, and he needs a surgery. Being a, a, a newborn baby, very, I don't know how old was the, the baby. And in that very difficult, because it was a, a dangerous surgery, difficult situation in the hospital there was a chapel and he he was he believed he went to pray and i remember them told him telling that she didn't understood what he was doing he was praying at that time she understood that he had someone to ask for help someone to trust him that she didn't so a situation of, of poverty, of difficulty, was an occasion for her to open the train, to ask him, what are you doing? <laughs> he was kneeling praying, what are you doing? What, tell me about this, that you can ask for help that I don't have, I don't know. And I also remember you know, that well, in Portugal, the, the, he was prime minister, then president of the Republic for a long time. He already died, a very uh, historic uh, person. And um, at, at the East, okay, he did no non believer, no? And his wife, too. And one son uh, there. Had an accident in a helicopter. It was a long time during the civil war in Angola. He had this accident and he was very bad among life and death. And his mother went to ask for help to the parish priest there. It was the same parish where the family founded in, in Portugal. That's why I know the story. And because of that, then 
this woman converted, start to participate in the community, go to mass every Sunday. So I was, I was well, I see it's a situation of of poverty, of need, uh, becomes an opportunity to find, to encounter the power of faith, the power of God. So many situations in our life that we experience as poverty, as needs, as things that still need to be healed, change our vision when we have faith, when we know that we can go approach God that wants us to live to the full. It was the first reading. And he is the source of this full life. So there's this big contrast now between people that believe and those that don't believe. That believe in a God that has the power to heal and that loves us so much that he wants us to live to the full. And we all have different kinds of hemorrhages or different things in us that are our weaknesses. To see this not as um, a bad thing, but an opportunity to approach Jesus in a more humble and true way and to open to an experience of faith, of living faith of this power. So how many situations in our life we go we give give up when we don't have this faith, he tells Jairus, no, don't fear, just believe. Many situations in our life we are tempted to give up when we don't see the solution, you know, as we feel we have two options, no, or to uh, desperate or give up or mourn about the same uh, like situations, but Jesus. God always has a different vision. Always, he, it's it's faith. This to believe that He is able to open uh, ways that we can see. We are not able to see, but He sees how. That's faith. <laughs> faith in His love for us, and this enables us enables us to act in a different way, to live in a different way, to never give up. That's what we, uh... So now I, I give you some questions for our prayer. we we'll do the silence time. Um, well, what did I learn, did you learn from the hemorrhagic woman's attitude? During all the passage, all the miracles, the start, and when she turns and goes before Jesus and tells all the truth, um, then the second, what are the poverty that I see and feel like this woman or as a shame that can become an opportunity to grow in faith? And in the knowledge of Jesus' love and power to give. So, usually, usually, we don't like to see our, to recognize our poverty, the things that we still don't know how to, to heal, to get out of it. But this is uh, very important to recognize because it's there where we can experience the fruit of a healing prayer, the fruit of Jesus' power to change what we cannot change by ourselves. 
And from this gospel, what did I discover as new of God's love for me and for all? That before praying this gospel, I ignored. And, and so this can become a conversion for my relationship with him, with, with Jesus, and also with my neighbors, brothers, and sisters. Many times also we are tempted to say, this person is like this, will never change, there's no solution. Uh, <laughs> that's it, you know? It's uh, when you talk about this person's problem, difficulty, uh, even Jesus changes, wants to change our way of thinking, our way of feeling, also towards ourselves and towards the other. He sees differently. He could call this woman daughter. She was before impure. You can say to Jairus uh, and to the, those that were there crying and well, the child is not dead. For God, we all live. We are all alive, and we, there's always um, a way to live better, to, to live more fully. So this also changes the way we look, especially for this difficult situation, like the woman and Jairus' daughter, you know? and the way we face its realities in ourselves and in others of course. So now we are in this time of silence and prayer. <laughs>